Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have another book box to share with you. It is the October 2022 Down the Rabbit Hole book box, which was sent to me for review and for photography. And I'm almost caught up on this subscription. So you should still be seeing it maybe twice a month until I am all caught up. And then hopefully I will be reading along with you as we receive our boxes. The box is $49.99 per month. That does include the domestic shipping and I just think it's really fun to get some darker reads. We get some classics from for example Stephen King or Agatha Christie as well as newer releases or ones from the early 2000s for example like the book that I have to share with you today and I really love the mysteries and the thrillers. The horror books that we get sometimes are a little bit challenging for me to get through as was the case with this particular month's box but I do really enjoy the authors. I do really enjoy all the gifts and I'm very happy that a lot of the times the gifts are sort of loose interpretations of the passages because because of the darker themes you wouldn't necessarily want mementos or big emblematic symbols of those themes that are uh, featured in the novels but I did think that this particular box was pretty good in terms of the curation uh, and we did get six different gifts there's usually I'd say five to seven the limited edition boxes often have even more than that but inside the box also very very pretty I think you can see it hopefully not too much glare but I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all of the items so that I can show you what they look like wrapped and then what I I do with these unboxings is I will read the passage so if this is a book that you think you might want to read there's not usually major spoilers depending on the passages but I will read the passages and then I will unwrap the gifts and share them with you now down the rabbit hole book box what they do is they'll give some hints as to the upcoming novel and then you will receive it so the book box itself has a theme that is not necessarily the title of the book and now she's actually started doing reading uh, questions as well so you can really use it as a book club sort of guide. So inside we get of course the gifts as well as our book and this time around it was The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum and it has this very dark uh, cover and then we also get our little pamphlet or brochure that usually tells us a little bit about the author so right here on the front of this pamphlet you can see what the theme was for this box it is the see no evil hear no evil speak no evil book box and then here is a very evocative and dark picture of a Jack Ketchum so so it says, I lay in bed and thought about how easy it was to hurt a person. It didn't have to be physical. All you had to do was take a good hard kick at something they cared about. And that is a quote, of course, from the novel, which is in the voice of one of the neighbor boys. So that's why it's the girl next door. Now, what made this book so hard for me to read was that knowing that it was based on a true story. And if I had time at the end, I'll read a little bit of the sort of author epilogue or interview at the end where he talks a little bit about the changes that he made from the real life story for the novel. Now this story has been made into, I believe, two movies back when the book was first released. I think it was made, they were made pretty soon. And I think there's another one coming out soon this year. So be on the lookout. Again, it is based on the story of Sylvia Likens and uh, her Per the woman who took her in and all of the neighborhood children. So in the book, it's a little bit different where uh, Gertrude is the real life woman, but in the book, it is Ruth who is the one who's letting all of this terrible, like Lord of the Flies community abuse happen to this poor girl who in the book is Meg. In real life, it is based on the story of Sylvia Likens. So again, it tells us a little bio about the author. I won't take the time for that, but I did think it was really interesting. Uh, and we did get a nice little bookmark, a little butterfly fly bookmark. Sometimes there's little extras like Spotify playlists or other bookish items or things to enjoy and drink as you're reading. But this time around, like I said, we did get six gifts. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. So on page 28 and this is what it looks like so a little difference is of course one we have it told in the story of one of the neighbor boys who doesn't really participate in the abuse thankfully uh, because you want to have a likable narrator but at the same time um, they also moved it from I believe it happened in Indiana in the Midwest and then Jack Ketchum moved it to New Jersey which I think is because of his background is a little, little bit more um, of a subject that he knows but this is what the uh, little sticky look sticky notes look like when you get to them 
So let me go ahead and find the gift that goes along with it. So this one came in a little mailer bag with the appropriate sticker on it. So they're talking about what's interesting is in the first part, so in real life, the girls that were left with a, sort of a woman in the neighborhood who already had, I think, seven children, um, they were the children of a people who traveled with the carnival. That is not the case in the book. In the book that it is, Ruth is their aunt um, and their parents were killed in a car accident. Uh, that's not a big spoiler because it happens in the very beginning. So there is that difference where in the book they're actually related, but they're just sort of introducing all of the different uh, neighborhood kids that are around. So they're at the carnival. So I thought it was kind of interesting that they're talking about this local neighborhood carnival that always comes and it was kind of a nod to the real life story. So he is talking to um, David, the narrator is talking to Cheryl, says, and they're looking at the carnival being set up, says, they're worried about rain, she said. They're worried, said Cheryl. I'm worried. She sighed in exasperation. It was very exaggerated. I smiled. There was always something sweetly serious about Cheryl. You just knew her favorite book was Alice in Wonderland. The truth was, I liked her. So... We're going to go ahead and find our first gift, which, like I said, was in this little mailer bag. So this particular scene didn't have like a ton to do with the, the actual plot line of the story. But like I said, I did think that little um, nod to the real life parents of the girls that were abused was interesting. So we have this nice edition of Alice in Wonderland, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's kind of got this like faux leather cover and I just thought it was kind of cool to have this uh, simple edition. So we got a book within a book box, an extra book within a book box, which I don't mind too much. I haven't read Alice in Wonderland in a long time. I have a really thick edition that's got a ton, a ton of uh, Lewis Carroll. So let's see. Maybe it might be the complete works of Lewis Carroll because it's a really big tome. So the next one was on page 138, I believe. Sometimes I write a list. That's what I'm looking at off on the side because sometimes they turn right to the page with the sticky note. And sometimes if it's a stiffer book, it doesn't. All right, so let me see. What was the gift for this one? All right, so things have definitely escalated in the last 100 pages. Uh, let's see. Um, and Meg, again, is basically Sylvia Likens in this, in this particular telling of the story. Woofer paced around in front of her, running the beam of his flashlight up and down her body. There was a bruise just under the blindfold on her left cheek. Susan sat on a carton of canned vegetables, watching. A blue strand of ribbon made a bow in her hair. Off in the corner, I could see a pile of blankets and an air mattress. I realized Meg had been sleeping there. I wondered for how long. We're all here, said Ruth. So uh, Susan is, in this case, Meg's sister, um, and she is the one that has a uh, disability from the car accident, but this time around, this was a gift number two, and inside, we got a blue hair ribbon. So this was actually kind of cute. This reminds me of like the hair ribbons that I used to wear like back in the day, like probably like in the early 90s. Long hair ribbon. It's just got one of those nice uh, clips on the back. But I do feel like this is having kind of a resurgence. Definitely the 80s and 90s are coming back. So this could look really cute on your ponytail, kind of elegant. But I did like this as a, as a gift that was included. But you can see how some of the interpretations are a little bit looser. So that was our second gift. Then our next one came not too long later on page 189. Let me see if I can find this one and then I'd like to sort of remember what's going on. All right, so Meg is continuing to just be like tied and gagged most of the time and David still keeps going over to the house to see what's going on. Uh, let's see. It was a hot day and the sweat rolled off him, streamed out of his close-cut carrot red hair and down his forehead. As usual, he had his shirt off so he could see his great physique and the smell of his sweat rolled off of him too. He smelled salty and sticky sweet like old bad meat. I didn't stay. I went upstairs. Susan was putting together a jigsaw puzzle on the kitchen table. There was a half-empty glass of milk beside her. The television, for once, was silent. You could hear the slaps and laughter from below. So they're basically just beating on Meg and the mother doesn't seem to care. And this is gift number three, came wrapped in this mailer bag. So I will open this up. Again, you can see how you wouldn't necessarily want uh, literal, well, these are literal gifts from the pages, but not sort of evoking that uh, 
abuse. We got a nice thousand piece jigsaw puzzle that says home sweet home, which of course is a little bit ironic because this whole story is about this suburban family that you think would be normal, but they are absolutely not. Um, there's not much of a blurb on the back of this book. That's why I didn't read it to you. It just says a teenage girl is held captive and brutally tortured by neighborhood children. Based on a true story, this shocking novel reveals the depravity of which we are all capable. So um, didn't tell you that much, but again, it is sort of this strange world and you just you, the whole time you're just wondering how could this really happen but let me read you the goodreads blurb it says suburbia shady tree-lined streets well-tended lawns and cozy homes a nice quiet place to grow up unless you are teenage meg or her crippled sister susan on a dead-end street in the dark damp basement of the chandler house meg and susan are left captive to the savage whims and rages of a distant aunt who is rapidly descending into madness it is a madness that infects all three of her sons and finally the entire neighborhood. Only one troubled boy stands hesitantly between Meg and Susan and their cruel, torturous deaths. A boy with a very adult decision to make. So that brings a little bit more of the drama into it, that description of it. So, but that wasn't on the, on the actual book itself. All right, so that was our third gift. Then we have gift number four, which was on 228. 228 let's see it's just like it's crazy how brutal this was and that's why I like this kind of torture horror is really hard for me to read let alone see a movie this is one of the ones where I don't think I would want to see the movie personally so this is to go along with gift number four this is a very evocative scene and this is definitely based on um, something that happened in real life but Ruth just turned to me, still not angry, sounding calm and sort of weary, almost like she were trying to tell me something I should have known all along, strictly for my own benefit, as though she were doing something really nice for me, as though of all the people here in this room, I was her favorite. David, she said, I'm telling you, just leave this be. I want to go then, I said. I want to get out of here. No, I don't want to see this. Then don't look. They were going to do it to her. Woofer had matches. He was heating the needle. I was trying not to cry. I don't want to hear it either. Too bad, she said. Unless you've got wax in your ears, you'll hear it plenty. And I did. So basically they are branding her, tattooing her, etching terrible words into Meg's body, which they did in real life to Sylvia. So inside we got some needles. We got a travel sewing kit, which is a Good interpretation, definitely a useful thing to have. I like having travel sewing kits. I always wind up using the black and the white thread first though. So this was a good one, even though it is a very terrifying image. They heated up a needle and branded this girl and carved words into her. Terrible, terrible words, in fact. So that was gift number four, I believe. And then we have gift number five, which came on page 264. We're almost there. So on page 264, this is right towards the end where we are happy that um, someone got their comeuppance. So it says, that ring I said, I pointed. The ring on her finger was Meg's. It belonged to Meg's mother. It should go to Susan now. Can I give it to her? Jennings, who's a police officer, gave me a pained look that said enough was enough and not to push it. But I didn't worry about that either. The ring belongs to Susan, I said. Jennings sighed. Is that true, boys? He asked. Things will go better from here on in if you don't lie. I guess, Donnie, said Donnie. Willie looked at his brother and then says some profanity. Um, so basically, Jennings lifted Ruth's hand and looked at the ring. Okay, he said. And then all at once his voice was gentle. You go give it to her. He worked it off her finger. Tell her not to lose it, he said. I will. And I went upstairs. So this is to give the ring to the younger sister who has survived uh, and Ruth has been wearing that ring. So this is gift number five. So of course, inside we got a ring box. Now, one thing I will say about book subscriptions, whenever we get jewelry, because they're giving us so many gifts as well as the book, the jewelry is not very high quality. I kind of wish there was like a more elegant uh, book box where maybe we only got two or three gifts and then the quality of the jewelry and the items was a little bit higher. Like I have started to learn to appreciate, especially with book boxes, um, more quality over quantity. I'm, I mean, I'm generally that way, but especially with book boxes. 
So it's in some plastic, so I'm going to pull this out. Um, I don't know that this is the kind of ring that um, Meg's parents would have had. I don't think that they were particularly wealthy, and certainly um, I feel like Ruth would have sold a ring like this if she had it and had gotten it from Meg. But this is what it looks like. So we have all these little stones. It's kind of rounded, but it's really pretty. It's not a resizable ring, though, as far as I can tell. So you would have to make sure that it fits your ring finger. And I think it was probably... this. Is is probably like a size seven or eight so it's pretty big but it actually looks like pretty good quality so this was a nice surprise for a jewelry piece in a book subscription to me and I like that it was gold and this was a good um, item that was definitely very symbolic in the book but didn't bother me because it was sort of a triumphant moment even though it's a very sad moment as well then the last one was just on the last page, which actually they had put the sticky note at the end right before uh, the author's note. And it, there were some excerpts, like there were some excerpts from more of Jack Ketchum's books. So I was a little confused because I was like, well, I have to read those sections. But then when I realized that they had nothing to do with the girl next door, I was like, oh, it should have gone on page 273 was the actual last page of the book, which I don't necessarily need to read to you because I do want to, if I can, read a little paragraph to you from the author at the end about his writing of it instead. But what we got for gift number six, and uh, Down the Rabbit Hole Book Box does this sometimes, so we got a little envelope, and I was really happy that it wasn't just like a letter, for example, like uh, the letter that Meg was forced to write. Instead, it is just a card telling us that the average cost of a Down the Rabbit Hole Book Box gift has been donated to the Sylvia's Child Advocacy Center. So again, the book is based on the story of Sylvia Sylvia Likens and um, the horrible doings of Gertrude, I think you say it, Banachevsky, I'm not totally sure. But um, so it says Sylvia's Child Advocacy Center's mission is to reduce trauma to a child victim of abuse by allowing them to tell their story in a safe, comfortable, and child focused environment. This program will allow the child to work with a trained forensic interviewer who will ask age appropriate and non leading questions. A donation to Sylvia's CAC is an investment in a child in crisis. Your support means children today will have a safe, neutral, child first facility that Sylvia Likens never had. This donation not only will support prevention, education, and awareness campaigns, but will also fund sustainable forensic interviews and investigations of informed abuse or neglect, as well as referrals to medical and mental health professionals and the relentless pursuit of stopping child abuse before it starts in Boone County. So love that, love that give back element because, you know, sometimes these stories of true crime or um, horror stories like this, when like they're not just fiction, they actually happen in real life, it can feel a little voyeuristic. So I really love that this book box decided to give back. So I am going to read just a little paragraph from the back from that author's note. So he talks about, um, so there's obviously child abuse. And what's really frustrating is that the uh, neighbors that actually hear about it and the other neighborhood kids like don't report it. Uh, she, the Meg tries to report it at one point, but like it goes on deaf ears. So it says... Uh, abuse so extreme that writing it, I eventually made the decision to soften some of what happened and leave some out altogether. It's still pretty extreme. There wasn't any getting around that, not that I could see. The problem, in fact, was to keep it extreme without ripping off all those real-life kids who are abused every day in the process. Posing technical problems helped. I used a first-person voice, for one thing, with the boy next door as narrator. He's a troubled but not insensitive kid who vacillates between his fascination at the very license involved and what his empathy is telling him. He sees plenty, but not everything, which allowed me to sketch a few things rather than go at them close up and full throttle. He's also speaking some 30 years later. He's an adult now, so he can edit. So at one point, when the going gets roughest, I have him say, sorry, I'm just not going to show you this. Imagine it for yourself if you care and dare to. Me? I'm not helping. So I love the thoughts that he tells us about, the reasons he has the narrator, um be empathetic but also looking at it from 30 years later and he still seems very very damaged from the experience so um, I did I did like the choices that he made and I appreciate that he did soften it to some degree it was a really difficult read like I said it would have been hard to read even if I knew it was fiction, but knowing that it was based on a true story made it even harder. But I do like the difference that they're making with that donation. Uh, you guys, I just thought this was a really good book. And if you are interested in that um, and you 
want to read true stories that are done sensitively, then this would be a good book. But like I said, it is definitely in that horror and torture horror genre. So if that's too much for you, by all means, I would skip this one and definitely skip the movies because those would be really, really intense in my opinion. But I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please help me out with a thumbs up. If you do like darker reads, if you do like true crime, then definitely consider this book subscription and I will see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.